Good evening. My name is Mike. I'm a lay reader at St Paul's in St Albans. And this is night prayer on Advent Sunday the 29th of November. Night prayer is a service which used to be called Compline. It was, and possibly still is, the last service in the day at a monastery. It's a service for bringing the day to a close. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's think about today. Was there anything we got wrong or did wrong? We have the opportunity to tell God about it, and if we think we were at fault, we can ask for his forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Grant, we ask, merciful Lord, for us, your people, pardon and peace, that we may be freed from all our mistakes and wrongdoings, and follow you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now my wife Jenny is going to read a New Testament psalm. It's based on Paul's letter to the Colossians, it may well have been used as a hymn at the time when Paul was writing. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. For it pleased God that in him all his fullness should dwell, and through him all things be reconciled to himself. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. I'm going to read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, 
This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. Imagine a king or a queen visiting a city. The royal train draws into the station. The railway company has its most experienced driver on the engine and he's been given instructions that he must stop the train so that the door of the carriage is precisely lined up with the red carpet. When Joe Biden visits Ireland, he will arrive on a very elaborately fitted out aeroplane which rejoices in the name Air Force One. These are things which make a statement about the person who is arriving. The crowd who turn out to greet this king or president is kept, of course, at a safe distance. Jesus arrived on a donkey. That makes a statement as well, but it's a very different statement. And the crowd greeted him in a manner which itself made another statement about Jesus, this time about his popularity. And a bit later on, Jesus storms into the temple. He threw people out who had no business to be doing what they were doing. That was a statement about his authority. Yet after that is over, we hear that the blind and the lame start coming to him, asking for healing. They're not turned away, they're not kept at a safe distance, they're given what they're asking for. So these verses from Matthew bring out that Jesus had more authority and more power than anyone has ever had before or since, and yet was gentle and approachable at the same time. Our liturgy continues. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking. Guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep may rest in peace. And now we come to words spoken first by a man named Simeon when he met Mary Joseph and their baby Jesus in the temple. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Let us pray for the world we live in. O Heavenly Father, our world is hurting. There's conflict, war, disease, Oh, is there disease? And we look at the times when you've offered restoration if people would come back to you. We ask that you would draw us to you and would care for the hurts of this world. We pray for your peace for Afghanistan. 
we pray that you would give wisdom to our government in this country. Faced with the choice between measures to suppress the virus and the damage it does to the economy. Lord, we pray that you would intervene to bring this virus to an end. Pray that the vaccines which look as if they're going to work really will work and will be effective and will be here soon. And Lord, we think of the people who are hurt by this the people with no income, no livelihood all of a sudden. Lord, we bring them to you and ask for your help for them. And thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And this is a collect for Advent. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. If we could, we would say this together. If you can say it along with me, please do. It's the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise and magnify him for ever. And thinking of this week we've started, the days to come in the week, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.